And welcome back to Chris Timms Comedy Cabaret is coming. Looking forward to this. Uh, we brought a guy on the show named Chris Timms to talk about it. That makes sense, right? Yeah. It could be kind of weird if we had someone here that like wasn't you. Yeah, it'd be weird if like I had nothing to do with the show and someone's just like, ah, let's do the Chris Timms Comedy <laughs> yeah, Cabaret. Sure, why not? Yeah, Chris Timms, you're a comedian. I people tell me that. Yeah. yeah. How long at this point? Because you you haven't been a comedian your whole life. All of a sudden, you decided this is this looks fun. Let's it's been this. about nine years now. Yeah, pretty pretty long time, I guess. Pretty long time. Almost yeah. a decade of destruction. Almost. Yeah. Almost. What uh, what do you love about being a comedian? Uh, no boss, really. Yeah. I can say almost anything I want on stage, which is, and yeah, people and you laugh. Do. <laughs> I've seen your show. Yeah, I cross some lines. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah, it's all right. It's all in good fun. Does it feel good? Does it feel therapeutic to cross those lines sometimes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the amount of money I save on, on therapy is ridiculous. You just get out there and you tell some yeah, jokes. Exactly. Sometimes some... I just don't even have to tell jokes. Just pour it out there and hope for the best. Just start talking. Yeah, why not? Which feels good. Uh, okay, so all these years now, almost a decade of being a comedian. And it, how long has the, the cabaret been around for? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah, I was looking at that the other day. Well, it'll be seven years in January. It started in 2011, so... And it's been a pretty impressive uh, a cabaret as well. You've got some pretty decent names on the bill over the years. Yeah, quite a few. Mike McDonald, most notably. Yeah. Uh, it was the first show he did after his liver transplant, like his first headline thing. And it was, uh, it kind of made the show special for me. I grew up watching Mike McDonald. So we did the show and it was really great. And his mom was there. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, his mom came up and was like, oh, thank you so much for putting my son on your show. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me, lady? Like, Something thank I... you for giving birth to this man. Yeah, so. they are an incredible family. You're talking yeah. about Colette. Yep. Colette yeah, McDonald. Absolutely. And she's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so, so this time around, uh, you've got the cabaret, but it's it's been off for a little bit. You've been off yeah, for like we, a year or two? About a year. About a year? Uh, while they did all the renovations, and then uh, I thought we were done. We did a finale show uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, the new uh, producer gave us a call and was like, hey, we'd love to have you back, so mm -hmm. here we are. So is it in the same location? Because before it was the fourth stage. It's still in the fourth stage. Okay. Yeah. So, because I'm not really up to date on everything they've done at the National Arts Centre, because they seem to have put like billions of dollars into making it look nice, yeah. and now I can't understand where I am where I, when I'm in there. Yeah, no, so, me neither. Uh, so, but it's still the same area, and it's yeah. still called the fourth stage. Absolutely. Have you had a chance to see? Uh, I've not new, seen it yet. No, I'll be seeing it or later this week. Um, Sunday, absolutely. Yeah. Um, he should be there for the yeah, show, right? Exactly. But yeah. uh, no, I, I've been told really good things. I don't think the fourth stage has changed all that much, which is perfect for my show because it's a nice, small, intimate little room. Yeah. Uh, perfect for comedy. Yeah, I, I know you've uh, allowed me to be the the announcer for the show a, a number of times. Yeah, to, and, and it is a very intimate. I don't know if it's a couple hundred that are seated in there. Uh, about two hundred. Yeah, two hundred people. Okay, so uh, who's on the bill this time around? We got headlining Brendan McKeegan. Yeah, a uh, hilarious guy. I've worked with him for years. Uh, he goes uh, overseas and entertains the troops and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he's just getting back, so he's going to be doing the show. And then we have um, Colin O'Brien and Heather Hurst, two really great up and coming local comics. Mm -hmm. uh, music uh, act is Zach Agar. Mm -hmm. uh, really funny. He's from Peterborough. And you've had him on before. You've I have had him on before. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, we got some good camaraderie together. And uh, Jason Coulson's playing on the piano. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because it is sort of, I mean, it is a comedy show, but d because you incorporate, you know, piano and, and a musician, it's kind of a bit of a variety show. Yeah, I like the idea of that old time cabaret. Uh, where you'd go and the guy, you had the guy playing music and you had like a musical act as well as the comedians and it's like a nice night out. So I want to try and play on something like that, but then, you know, a little rougher around the edges. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Is it neat to be on the, uh, the stage at the NAC? Yeah, well, for me as a comedian growing up in the city, like we've had some good comics come through here, but you don't have the type of names that hit the comedy clubs like in Montreal or out west or Toronto and you see some of these faces on the wall like a Chris Rock in, when he's coming up or a Jerry Seinfeld or whatever the case where when you play at the NAC all these people have played there that's where they come George Carlin's my hero I saw him at the National Arts Center Jerry Seinfeld mm -hmm. uh, Bill Burr Jim Jeffries I've seen them all at the National Arts Center you don't see them at the club so for us at least for me, it's neat because then I can go, okay, it's not the exact same stage, but I'm in the same four walls. Yeah. And it has a bit of history like that. It's pretty cool to say that you played the NAC. No yeah, matter, that's Even if right. it's like a broom closet or a toilet or something like that. Yeah, it all happened out of spite, too. It was great. Yeah. So. Why? It happened out of spite? Uh, yeah, and I was doing a show at a, a bar that used to exist in the city, and then they were like, no, we don't want to do this anymore. And uh, I was childish about it. I was like, I'll show you guys. I'm going to put on the best damn show I can. And yeah. So I found the best venue I can, and they were like, oh, we like your idea. And that's great. The rest is history. I love how I, I saw you scramble to uh, choose the word. Um, Thank you. That you to, to explain the adjective, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Verb. I, I'm proud of myself yeah. for that. Good it, word. I wish I could do that in Winnipeg. I <laughs> slipped out on the radio. It was not good. Uh, whoops. 
Uh, and it's the longest running independent show yeah. as well in Canada. Yeah. So tell us about no, that. No, not in Canada. Sorry. No, no, just in Ottawa. In Ottawa. But uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not affiliated with uh, Yuck Yucks or Absolute Comedy with this show. I am, I do most of my shows with Absolute yeah. um, independently from this. But uh, I, it's all my own money. I work my day job uh, cooking food yeah. so I can fund this show and my other endeavors. So. so it's good for people to come out and support a guy oh who's... Oh, God. Not even support hurt. me. Support the other acts because it's like a great showcase for them. You see them all at the same, you know, the same stages or the same rooms in the city to come out to something that's a little bit more extravagant, a little bit nicer, mm -hmm. um, arguably. Uh, it's great for them, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. It's a fun night out for all the performers as well as uh, the audience. Tell us about your podcast that's doing well. Uh, the Socially Challenged yeah. Podcast. Uh, so I started off doing a lot of interviews, and then uh, over the past little while, it's just kind of been me rambling for about an hour or so about various topics or yeah. things that are, uh, you know, uh, aggravating me in, in the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The last episode was all about the new marijuana laws. If you want to check it out, you can yeah. go to sociallychallengedcreations.com. <laughs> and, uh, you know. You've got some viewpoints on that, I bet. I have a few. Let's keep uh, those on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Just for, you know, for our purposes here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so 8.30, rather. Uh, it, it's happening on a Sunday? Yeah, 8.30 uh, this Sunday. Uh, doors open at 7.30. We have a bar, so you can come in, get some drinks. It's first come, first serve seating, so uh, you come on in. And, and you've got shows lined up right through till February? At this yeah, point? once a month. Once so a month. We'll, we'll be there again December 17th. We have Pierre Bro headlining. Uh, January 21st, we have Josh Williams headlining. And cool. then to close things out on February 18th, the man himself, Mike McDonald. Oh, back. he's back. Yeah. Great. Chris Timms, Comedy Cabaret's happening this Sunday. More details, sociallychallengedcreations.com. Absolutely. Thank you very much for hey, being thank here. You. Always good times. Yes, sir. Always good times. Coming up, Office Hours is coming to the Gladstone. I'll give you more details and a giveaway next on Daytime.